In this lesson, we're looking at exchanges of waste, but particularly the urinary system. So there's quite a lot here, and there is going to be a second lesson so that you can focus on, say, this particular dot point and this particular one. All right, so we've already discussed uh, digestion, where the body intakes food and absorbs nutrients to create energy, right? That makes sense. We've done that part. And during the course of digestion, our body can absorb toxic substances in our food that we eat. So our body has to remove them as well. You know that digestion also breaks down food into its essential components, and this way the building blocks of molecules can be recycled and used to create other things. Now, the metabolism is all of these chemical reactions which your body undergoes, and the reactions um, as part of digestion are a huge part of this as well. Obviously, as part of these chemical reactions, useful products are created and wastes as well. Uh, and if these wastes uh, start to accumulate in the body, they can be become detrimental, right? They need to be removed so that the cells can function as normal. So our body must find a way to do that. And it has a filtration process and excretion process to do this. So some examples of our waste products include carbon dioxide from cellular respiration um, and nitrogenous waste from the breakdown of proteins. And that's our focus for today. But we also know that cellular respiration creates, uh, sorry, breaks down carbs and lipids. And ultimately, ultimately, it's going to create energy in the form of ATP. But we know that waste product is CO2, for example. And we take that to the lungs and we breathe it out, right? Nice and easy. But the water in this situation can be used in other, in other ways as well. It's not considered a waste product. But when proteins are digested and broken down, they create nitrogenous waste. So that means it's nitrogen containing. Now, remember that the proteins are made of a string of amino acids um, in which the nitrogen is the structural, you know, part of the structural component of all of them here. So when the proteins are broken down, the nitrogenous parts are split off and it leaves the remaining parts of the molecule to be converted into carbohydrates or lipids or whatever else. This means the nitrogen's got to be removed in some other way. Now, initially, the nitrogen waste is in the form of ammonia, which is soluble in water. And for aquatic animals, uh, that's really great because they can just remove that via their gills. But for us, it's incredibly toxic, so we can't store it for very long. We need to use our um, energy to convert it into urea or ure oh, sorry, uric acid, which is less toxic, and therefore we can store it for a little bit longer. Now, mammals excrete this waste as urea. Uh, birds and reptiles... Um, excrete it either as ammonia, sorry, uh, uric acid here, and that's actually the white component of bird poo. It contains crystals of uric acid. So now we aren't just talking about the internal cellular environment when we do this. We have to think about the extracellular environment. So around the outside of cells is the extracellular fluid. It's also called interstitial fluid, and it's sitting between all the cells in the tissues, right? It's basically a solution of water and salts, and its composition needs to be really highly regulated. Um, you know, if, if it's pH or it's water or it's salt balance changes, it's not suitable for enzymes and other molecules to function properly. Uh, we know you know based on our potato practicals that if the salt concentration changes then the cells are going to change as well so when salts and waters are removed from the body during excretion it needs to be handled in a really delicate way to keep this extracellular intracellular fluid balance really really uh, tightly controlled now, part of the liver's role is to detoxify the blood. So any chemicals or drugs or alcohols that are ingested are absorbed during the digestion. Um, they'll circulate in the bloodstream. And as proteins are digested and broken down, the nitrogenous waste like urea will also be circulating. But to remove these wastes, we actually have kidneys to do that. And the kidney's role is to filter out the waste products, um, reabsorb the useful stuff that we need, um, so before secure, uh, sorry, before secreting unwanted urea and other wastes like urine, it's got to get the good stuff, right? So the body will lose a little bit of water in this process uh, to make sure that the wastes are dissolved and you can move them by that. Um, but much of the water our body filters out and reabsorbs, so it takes back in to be used, say, in our bloodstream. Now, desert animals are highly adapted uh, to make urine, which is extremely concentrated in terms of salt and water. Um, but, you know, the less urine they excrete, the better, because they're not losing as much water. And we often see that here. We're not really talking about how much um, salt is in our urine. It's actually how much water we are excreting with it. So if you're super hydrate, uh, super dehydrated, when you go and urinate, you're not going to have much water being removed because your body's trying to conserve it. 
Now blood enters the kidneys through the renal artery, it leaves via the renal vein, which makes sense. And within the organ, there are substantially smaller uh, filtration systems, and these are called the nephron. And that's a really important point here. The nephron is really highly um, vascularized. It's got a lot of capillaries running near it, and the nephron will absorb or save or reabsorb any worthwhile substances like uh, sugars and, and water. And the filtrate that is produced contains as little water as we can spare and the waste salts and all the other chemicals we're trying to remove. So this is a nephron. It's incredibly complex. It's sometimes depicted in a very uh, simplistic way, but we're going to study more about that uh, because it is quite important or it's vital to the filtration that is occurring in the kidney. So it's really important that you go and have a look at that next lesson. Okay.